You may be seated. Our message today is get, will be given by Keely McCarty from Clarence. Keely. Can you hear me? Good morning, everyone. As she said, my name is Keely McCarty, and I am from Clarence, born and raised there, uh, even graduated from South Shelby, for those of you who don't know me a little bit. Um, after high school, I went off to college at Northwest University in Maryville. Um, there, I had the opportunity to become involved with the Wesley Center there, and had the um, had the chance to be an intern there and do a little bit of ministry myself um, at a neighboring town there. So um, I had the privilege of meeting Andy in high school at church camp at Camp Jeoda, and he knew about my experience there at Northwest with the internship and the preaching that I've done there. So um, he's kind of called me back to my old college roots and uh, asked me to be here today to help share in today's message. Uh, after I read the parable of the bridesmaids, of the ten bridesmaids, my first initial thought was um, about weddings, naturally. Uh, it talks about the bridegroom, it talks about the bridesmaids, uh, but I also thought about weddings personally because I myself was a bridesmaid uh, just a few weeks ago with um, a friend that I had made in college. And the wedding was in Kansas City. So I ended up spending the whole weekend there just so I can participate with all the wedding festivities, the rehearsal the night before, the big day, and even stayed until the reception right after the wedding ceremony. Um, the bride, bride and groom had purposefully planned to have their wedding the weekend before Halloween because they wanted to have a Halloween-themed reception. And so they invited all of their guests to uh, come up to the reception in a costume, dress up in a Halloween costume. And, and I was a little eerie about that for a second because I'm just thinking it's kind of odd to show up at a wedding reception dressed in a costume. But I was really surprised to see that everyone did show up with a costume. Uh, we had several people, uh, several different costumes from Forrest Gump to Fred and Wilma Flintstone. I remember even being amazed that uh, the grandma of the bride even showed up in a costume and she was dressed as Maleficent. And I just remember being so surprised that the grandma of the bride would dress up because I know my grandma would not <laughs> come to a wedding reception in a costume. No, sir. But, um, and even the bride and groom dressed up for their Halloween reception. They still stayed in their, in their wedding gown and their tux, but they painted their faces as skeletons just so that they can help uh, participate in the festivities there. And, and it was a great, great weekend. We had lots of fun. It, the whole weekend was just full of love and fellowship as we all shared in the joy of being together that weekend. I do have to admit, though, uh, even though the wedding was a few weeks ago, I still haven't unpacked all my bags from that weekend. Uh, mostly because I have been really busy and I just haven't taken the time to unpack my bags. And I know some of you are probably thinking, how hard is it to unpack one small bag? But I am a woman and I require a lot of things to help make me presentable for the public eye. So, um, and not to mention, I was away for three days. So I wanted to make sure that I had everything packed uh, that I could possibly need for those three days away from home. I packed an outfit for Friday for when we all went to go get our nails done. Of course, I had to have an, another outfit for the wedding rehearsal. And then the bridesmaid's dress had to have that for the big wedding day and all the accessories that come with that. And I had a separate bag for my costume for the reception. Had to have all my accessories that I needed for my costume there. And again, I had to have a bag for all my bathroom supplies to help make me look the way that I do. And finally, I packed a bag to have a change of clothes so that I could travel in, so that I could have something different to wear when I drove to and from Kansas City. 
And as I was preparing for my weekend, I remember thinking, you know, I do have a tendency to overpack whenever I go somewhere to overnight, uh, to stay overnight. And, but I still wanted to be able to take all the necessary things that I thought I might need. Uh, it gives me a sense of, of comfort to think that I'm prepared for whatever may happen. Of course, when I overpack, I don't use half the things that I pack, but still, it gives me that sense of comfort to think that I, I am prepared for whatever happens. In today's scripture, we heard about 10 bridesmaids, five of whom were foolish and five were wise. As was tradition back then on the wedding day, the bridegroom went to the bride's house for the ceremony. Then the bride and groom, along with a great procession of friends and family, they returned to the groom's house where a feast took place, and often that feast would last a full week. These ten bridesmaids that we read about today, they were waiting to join the procession. They hoped to take part in the wedding banquet. But when the groom didn't come at the expected time, five of them were out of oil for their lamps. And by the time they had purchased extra oil, it was too late for them to join the feast. Me personally, I would hate to be one of those bridesmaids in the parable that weren't fully prepared for the day. Um, I sit there and, and imagine how excited they were when their day first began. All day, these ten girls were anxiously anticipating the arrival of the bridegroom and couldn't wait to experience all the splendor of the wedding festivities. A feast had been prepared, full of delicious food and drinks, awaiting for guests to arrive. But, as it turns out, they would be waiting for a long time. The wait proves to be difficult, as it usually is for people who have high expectations. The wait lasts deep into the night, so late that all ten girls fell asleep. And that is a detail from the scripture that I want you to keep in mind about all ten girls. All ten girls are bridesmaids. All ten girls were invited. All ten girls want to see the bridegroom and join the party. All ten girls wait into the night, and all ten girls fell asleep. None is especially heroic or invulnerable. They are all equals who were presented with equal opportunities. Until the time finally comes when the bridegroom arrives. At that moment, these ten girls become divided. Five of them had planned for the day and packed the necessary supplies that they would need to help prepare them for whatever may happen. Those women were described as the wise. The foolish women were those who were not prepared for the late arrival of the bridegroom. They didn't bother to equip themselves to wait the right way. And so therefore, they will not be equipped to share the party with Jesus, the bridegroom, when he comes, when he becomes present. So they find themselves disinvited and locked out. The bridegroom claims to not know them. What happened? My second thought upon reading this parable was about being prepared. This parable reiterates the importance of being prepared for whatever may happen. It sets up a visual of what it looks like to live in readiness. Too many Christians read this disturbing parable and they fixate on the reality that is inside the door. They long for a promised wedding banquet to come and they begin to neglect their present circumstances. Other readers uh, focus on the locked door, and they can't abide an exclusion that it appears harsh and unyielding. They begin to think, hmm, all this just for forgetting an oil flask seems kind of harsh. And as those, important, and those details are important, they miss the fact that the most of the action in the parable takes place in on this side of the door. 
in a world that waits and a world that suffers as it waits. We are sometimes overcome with sleepiness, but where we stand today, no banquet door has been shut yet. Just as the ten bridesmaids are all equals and who were presented with equal opportunities, so are we. We are all children of God. We are all invited into the kingdom of heaven. We are all anticipating the arrival of Jesus the bridegroom. We are all awaiting to join in the feast. When Jesus returns to take his place and take his people in heaven, we must be ready. Spiritual preparation cannot be bought or borrowed at the last minute. Our relationship with God must be our own. Jesus said, therefore keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. So the question becomes, are you prepared for whatever may come? Amen. My sermons have a tendency.